Danny, welcome to the room. Uh, let's get started tonight with uh, Mike Griffith and then Seth Emerson. Uh, hey, Channing. Uh, great game yeah. against Florida. Appreciate you doing the interview tonight. Can you just give us some uh, background on, on how you guys are approaching a game you're supposed to win by 37 points? It would seem to be hard to maybe keep an edge for a team you're supposed to blow out. Uh, this Florida game is definitely that week was uh, like a challenging week for us uh, uh, offensively for Florida. Um, they run a lot of uh, schemes, kind of like eye violators. That that's what we call them, or not. And so, like, we just had to uh, really like buckle down and look at those type of things. And so, like, we just focus on what we had to do for our job. And so, like, once we uh, paid attention, like, what we had to do for our job, and just executed that, everything took care of itself after that. So yeah, now we had it. For, I'm in Missouri. Play a good Missouri. How are they different? How are how is Florida and Missouri different? Yeah, how's Missouri different from Florida? Uh, Missouri runs a lot more like a three spot uh, from the, their offense. They're a lot more like uh, I want to say like left to right than uh, Florida is. There's not as many eye violators, but they do uh, try to trick you a lot too. I'm good. I don't have anything. Okay, let's go next to uh, Chip Towers and then Dean Leggy. Yeah, Channing, uh, this uh, this defense, you know, we've written so much about how good it is. Obviously, it's a very good defense. But, uh, you know, the linebackers in particular, uh, D-line kind of gets a lot of the glory here. But you look at uh, what Quay did this past weekend. You've had uh, big games like that. Uh, Nicobe has a pick six. It seems like somebody's the, the uh, player of the week every week. Uh, in the SEC. Can you just talk about this uh, linebacker core? And I know the outside linebackers, they're the Wolf Pack. I don't know if you guys have come up with a <laughs> nickname for your group or, or your inside guys or not. Yeah. But. No, uh, in the inside linebacker group, we'll have a name or something. I'm probably going to have to talk about – probably talk about tonight, actually. I don't know. Or at the end of the season, like, we ain't really worried about a name for real right now. But uh, – uh, we just uh, – we always just try to improve. Like, each week we are uh, focus on getting better. So, we not we don't really try to focus on the past. Last week we look at our mistakes. So, now we just try to get better and better and better. I feel like that's what makes our room so special because we always – we're all competitive. So, we all trying to do better than the other one. So, like, uh, when you're trying to do better than the other one, you focus on everything, the keys, the alignments, uh, what you got to do, everything. Like, so we're trying to do – like, outdoing each other is actually making us uh, better. So, like, that, that's the number one thing that's kind of got us to, to the point that we are now. I think Dean's away from his chair, so let's go to Jake Rowe and then Ryan Curley. Channing, uh, I wanted to ask you kind of about Nolan. Um, you know, I, I, I want to say we've talked to you about him before. I can't really remember. But do you get the sense that, you know, obviously the plays he made Saturday against uh, Florida – I mean, is he a guy that, that, you know, you guys have seen that out of him a lot during practice, that playmaking element that maybe, um, you know, hasn't, you know, necessarily been there from a turnover standpoint like we saw against Florida? Oh, yeah, of, of definitely. In practice, like what you see in practice is what you're going to see, like seeing the game. And we're a firm believer, like what you do in practice is what's going to show up in the game. And Nolan's always – very passionate, very vocal, and he's going to make plays. And, like, what he does in practice, it shows up on the field. So, like, all his hard work, he earns it. All those plays you see, those, like, aren't just lucky plays. Like, he actually worked for those. So, yeah. Channing, how special has it been to be a part of a defense like this? Um, I mean, you guys are being compared to some of the best defenses ever. I mean, what is that like every day? You know, has it felt different this year than the last few years? Uh, I want to say, like, it feels different from a, a connection standpoint. Like, we're really close. We don't want to let each other down. But other than, uh, like, I want to say, like, even from previous years, like, we always just focus on, like, taking it one step at a time. So, like, we don't try to focus on uh, everything uh, out, well, everything that's going on outside. We just try to, like, the, uh, escalate. So, like, we're just trying to, like, take it one step, take it one step, take it one step. Because when you start focusing on what's outside, then you start losing uh, focus on your goal. And so, like, we, we can worry about that at the end of the season. But right now, we focus on Missouri. Let's go to Connor Riley and then Jed May. Yeah, hey, Channing. Um, with what you guys have done seemingly every week this season, does the success you've had 
surprise you at all? Or is it just, this is sort of what you guys expect based on the work you guys put in week in, week out? Uh, I want to say I, it's what we expect. Like from, uh, we try to hold each other all to a high standard. So like when we practice or not, we practice with a high standard. We don't uh, settle for little mistakes. We try to focus on the, uh, the, the little details, keep our composure, just uh, keep grinding all the way until we get where we want to go. Channing, what is your, <clears throat> I guess, favorite um, memory of, of Keithy Ringo just over this year? Obviously, he didn't get to practice with y'all last year with the injury. Just what, what has been your favorite, I guess, recollection of him, you know, on the practice field over this year? On the practice field, uh, I want to say my favorite uh, memory of Keeley. I want. I would, It's not my favorite memory of Keeley's not in a, a practice though. Like he worked so hard in practice. My fa favorite memory of Keeley is when uh, his interception. I want his first interception. I want to say that was against uh, UAB. I want to say I want like he just worked so hard. Like he's just a hard worker. Coach Smart stays on him, whatnot. Like he just keeps working and working and working and just to see him in that moment because that pick six and like uh come from it it's just like it was a special moment so that's like my favorite memory of you let's go to matthew welsh and then tyler griffith yeah channing i just want to ask you what does it feel like to have the opportunity to go up against the sec's leading rusher and y'all are gonna have a chance to really silence, silence their run game this weekend Oh, it's going it's gonna to be something. It's going to be special, but we're just going to lock down and do what we got to do. Just taking one step at a time. Game plan. Hey, so Coach Smart was just telling us that in regards to the leaders on the defense, y'all have a bunch of alpha dogs. Do you think that description is correct, and do you consider yourself one of those leaders or alpha dogs? I do feel like we have a lot of alpha dogs in the room, and I do consider myself one of the alpha dogs. Uh, it, just, it doesn't matter, like, who's on the field, what's going on. Like, I'm just going to speak for my room specifically, but, like, there's way more alpha dogs than just in my room. Like, it doesn't matter if the Kobe's out there, he's going to be the alpha dog. It don't matter if uh, Quay out there, he's going to be the alpha, alpha dog. It don't matter if Jamon or Smile out there, whoever out there, they're going to be the leader of that team when it when it's time. So, like, whoever, that that's a, what we're a firm believer in. Like, whoever, like, if you out there on the field, you're the alpha dog. So, you, you need to do what you got to do, do what you got to do to help the team out. All right, let's wrap up with uh, Jack Matheson. Hey, Janning. Um, I just want to talk uh, about uh, before the season, there's a lot of criticism about how young the Georgia secondary was. What have you seen from a lot of the young players in the secondary, like Kamari Lasseter and Keely Ringo, and how have they developed throughout the season? Uh, they very attentive. They focus on the little details, like I was saying before. Like they has a uh, really good composure. They really listen to what coach is saying. Like they don't like nobody get really gets mad. They take coaching, and like that's a big part of I feel like why they've been so successful lately. They really take coaching. So they don't like once they take coaching and just focus on everything they have to focus on. Then you just see the product once you get on the field. Let's go to Tyler Griffith. 